Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. On this edition, service members volunteer for photo shoot. The U.S. Army Field Band Summer Concert Series continues and news from MWR and more. But first, we're just days away from the beginning of school and that means more traffic and pedestrians. I spoke with Janelle Ferguson from the Installation Safety Office about a few things to keep in mind as kids head back to school. We start with some clarification on speed limits in school zones, especially Rockenbach Road in front of MacArthur Middle School. The primary thing we need to be concerned about is speeding. Um, for the last three months, traffic has been going maybe a little faster than usual, and now all of a sudden school is coming back in. You have to be aware that the speed limit in the school zone is 25 miles per hour. I always, I'm a big believer in erring on the side of caution, do no more than 20 miles per hour. Um, you're going to have more school buses on, you're going to have more parents driving vehicles, you're going to have students walking, so be aware of the surroundings. Paying attention to school buses and their signals is also very important. One of the things drivers need to be aware of now that if they're following the school bus, when you see that yellow caution sign, it's there for a reason. The school bus is actually getting ready to stop to either load or unload students. So as you're following that bus, you must be aware of that. And when you see the red flashing light and the extended arm that says stop on the school bus, stop at least 20 feet behind the school bus and be patient and allow the students to get off the bus and if they need to cross over to the other side of the street, give them time to do that. Although this next item doesn't seem like a safety issue, thousands of school children suffer from back and spinal issues because of heavy backpacks. So many kids are getting heavier books these days and they're having more back problems at younger ages. So be aware of having a light backpack and you don't try to overstuff it. And you don't want the backpack to be more than two inches above your waistline and it should never ever be more than 10 to 15 percent of your total body weight of the student. So that's a big one. The rolling book bags are, are pretty awesome, but they're hard getting on and off the bus. And when the weather's inclement, such as snow, it's hard to pull those rolling book bags in the snow. So you may load up these heavy book bags if you're on a clear day and a, and, and a good sidewalk, but when the weather gets bad, you're going to eventually have to pick that book bag up and carry it. For more on back to school safety, just go to our homepage at www.ftme.army.mil and click on safety. Meanwhile, the Department of Veterans Affairs recently purchased a new 295-acre national cemetery in Sarasota, Florida. The VA says the cemetery will serve veterans' needs for over the next 50 years. Currently, a permanent art exhibit is being built for the cemetery. Part of the exhibit will include images of contemporary service members from all branches. Many of those images were taken this week at Fort Meade. Okay, here we are. Close up. Perfect. Look up at her. Service members from around the Capital Region volunteered for the shoot. This group featured Air Force members from Cyber Command, Andrews Air Force Base, and Fort Meade. The obstacle course off Range Road provided the backdrop for the shots. Why the obstacle course? Photographer Greg Shaler says the goal was to try and capture the spirit of teamwork in a steel frame. And so we're going to approximate this by having them actually hold the logs and I'm going to capture it so that it appears like they're actually lifting when in fact that shot they aren't. Uh, this is going to be a homecoming between a father and a young child and um, they have been able to acquire some of the photos um, through newspapers and getting permission from the photographer as well as the person in the shot. And what about the volunteers? Why have your image memorialized for all time? I wanted to do something not just for my Air Force members but also for my family since they played a great you know, role in my career. So I just wanted to create that milestone for myself and for my, my um, wingmen. The photos themselves will be cast onto stone and glass as part of the exhibit. The project should be completed by the end of the year. Meanwhile, the last Twilight Tattoo Ceremony of the summer is being held at Fort McHenry on the 18th. This one is a special one, not only because Baltimore and Fort McHenry are commemorating the 200th bicentennial of the War of 1812, but this Saturday, the U.S. Navy Band, Drill Team, and Color Guard are participating. The event highlights the 200th anniversary of the famous naval victory of the U.S. Frigate Constitution over the British Frigate Guerriere. The Twilight Tattoo is free and open to the public. It starts Saturday at 6 p.m. at Fort McHenry. In a related story, don't forget the U.S. Army Field Band Summer Concert Series continues each Saturday through August with the volunteers this weekend and the big finale with the entire band on August 25th. Concerts start at 7 p.m. in Constitution Park. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.